In this video, I want to go over some basic guidelines on cycling. Uh, first of all, what is cycling? So cycling is when players move in a circular motion to maintain control of the puck, it's usually done in the offensive zone. So what the heck does that mean? Typically, uh, you'll have a player here with the puck, and maybe a D will be all over him. He'll be dogging him a bit. Okay, Cycling is when he can just drop the puck back there and they can skate in circular motion. Okay, this is a two-man cycle I'm showing right here. Ideally you want to use three. Uh, I'll just use two for now just to make things simple. Um, so I'll just get into three key concepts and explain this as I go. Uh, first, uh, climb up the wall. Okay, So what that means is I want my players to climb up the wall in this direction. Okay, and then they're going to be crashing towards the net. Okay, on this side, it'd be the other way around. Okay. So climb up the wall is the first key concept. And I'll explain why. And you can do it the other way, but it's much harder to. Um, the problem with the other direction, if you went down the wall, is this player is kind of skating backwards and trying to one timer if he if it's open for a pass and that's usually much harder than going towards in that yeah uh i mean for our teams uh for newer players it's just much easier to go in the other direction okay so just remember you're going this way and on this side you're going this way just remember you're going towards in that okay? uh, the second concept is spacing so a lot of my youth kids, I'll see that they have the puck here and their teammate will just follow them right away, which doesn't really do a whole lot because the defense is going to be here and maybe a defender's on him. And that just clogs the, the passing lane. Ideally, we want a little bit of spacing so that by the time this first player cuts in and makes that first pass, this is wide open. Okay. Also, if they're too close, uh, this player can easily just pick off that pass too. Okay, there needs to be a little bit of spacing. It's, it's hard to explain um, exactly what it's going to look like without without practicing, but I'll show a video of that later. Um, so the spacing, ideally, uh, we're going to spread out a little bit. Okay, uh, This player will be in front of the net, maybe. And as he, as he needs the help, maybe there's plenty of defenders. Okay, And he can go back here and pick it up back here. Okay. All right, and the third thing is to throw the puck along the board. Um, this is where there might be a little bit of controversy because I've seen some videos with uh, with really good coaches, really high level coaches, I should say. Um, well, first of all, let's say this player is a lefty on this board. Okay, remember he's facing this direction too. So uh, I just saw a video where the coach had him, he wants this player to turn around and make a direct pass to the player down here. Uh, I disagree with this 100%, and I'll explain why. Um, usually the player with the puck on the board right here, there's usually someone draped right on him, and his playing his inside shoulder. Okay. So for this player to throw it back down there, it's much easier for this player to, uh, to pick that pass off. Okay. So I'd rather have, if it's lefty, you just bank it off on your back end and throw it back down there. Okay, Hold on. okay now as a right-hander, uh, same thing. I, I saw a coach, he talked about you want to use your backhand to bank it. Because it's more deceptive. Uh, it takes too long to move your stick around this way and throw it on the forehand. Again, I disagree 100%. Um, I mean, maybe it's different at a higher level, I don't know. But from my own adult league teams and my youth teams, there's someone playing on her inside shoulder. And that pass gets picked off way too often. I've seen it way too often where you know, we just, they get a stick on it, something, so it ruins the cycle. When you pass it along the board, that's usually the safest way. I personally prefer them to always pass it along the board. So as a lefty on this side, if you're left-handed, remember they're facing this way. I want them to, to move their, or they don't have to turn their body around. They're just going to move their hands so that they use their forehand to bank it. Okay. And of course, the righty would just bank it off the back end there, okay, along the board. Uh, another thing I don't want to see is when... 
uh, especially with a kid who does do a backhand here, what happens a lot of times is the puck just barely banks and it just dies. Um, I don't want that. I want that thrown, thrown uh, way down here. Okay. Um, ideally, we want, let's see, the cycle is going to usually occur in this area, and I want the puck to just kind of roll down here somewhere in this area. Okay. So those are the three key concepts. Uh, climb up the board, spacing, and pass it along the board. Now let's go over a few additional concepts in no specific order. Um, first of all, uh, with this player, um, I don't want this player to cheat and go back there right away. I want him to stay in front of the net, him or her. Uh, and as this player, uh, once this player, uh, I, I, she, once he needs to throw it back like he sees someone else coming, once he needs to throw the puck back there, then this player can react and pick up the puck. Um, they don't have to cheat down there unless they know for sure this player cannot get it in front of them then. Okay. So, for example, well, let me draw that again. Okay. Is in front of net, and he's suddenly seeing one, two, three players. You know, if you know he cannot throw, you can start cheating back there, and call for the cycle right away. But ideally, if you can wait, you want to kind of stay in front of the goalie so that if, in case this player does beat his defender, he can get a shot. That's that's an ideal. Okay. Don't cheat too early unless unless you know for a fact they need the help. Now, ideally. Uh, you want to work this with three players. A three-man cycle is great. Okay, or maybe one's here, one's along the board, and one is more kind of in the middle of the ice. Okay, so we set up our our attack triangle here. I talked about on offense. We want to create triangles. Okay, our D will be here somewhere. Um, so it's really the same, uh, pretty simple concept, really. Okay, all three of you are skating in a circle, and you're just rotating. Just reading and reacting and rotating. Okay, if he needs help, and this player cycles back there, then this player will come back here. This player here would just cover in front of the net, and this player will go in the middle ice. All right. All right. Now, of course, in a game, I don't want you guys to blindly just cycle just because I told you to do it. This is just a tool you can use, and an additional option to. Uh, to what you can do on offense. Um, so first of all, the player with the puck here on this board, if this if this defenseman is cheating and is playing along the board, of course you don't want to cycle it. Okay? Ideally, this forward, I want you to, if you can, you cut right in and you take a shot. Okay? If that's uh, if that's open, then you do it. Okay? Um, if they're playing defense correctly, maybe the defense is kind of in your way, if you can get the pass here, that's a good option. Maybe a pass here, that's a good option. If you don't have either of those, maybe you have other defenders, you can pass it to a point. Okay. So this is just a way to open up options. You have one, two, three, four options. You can cycle if you don't like any of those. Okay. Maybe even a pass here. Although it's a little bit more difficult for newer players. Um, all right, so the last thing I want to get at is, is while cycling is usually used in the offensive zone, um, you don't always have to use it there. You can use it in the neutral zone too. Um, I probably should have more rink here, but that's okay. Uh, so maybe you're, you have the puck here and you're skating back to your own zone. Um, and there's a D kind of dogging you again. Maybe you have a teammate here who's uh just getting back on side. If you call for a cycle, you can do the same thing. Just bank it back there. Go in a circle here. Okay, he picks up the puck. Maybe he makes that pass right away. Okay. Maybe he doesn't have it, he can bank it down again. Okay. So all sorts of ways to use cycles. It doesn't have to just be in the offensive zone. Uh, with that, let me show you a quick video on what it looks like in game. Sorry, two quick things I want to emphasize really fast. I freaking collected to do so in the video. Um, when you're the player in front of the net, uh, you just have to not be flat-footed. You just have to be ready for that pass step back down here. Okay. So you don't have to move back there, but just don't be flat-footed. Too many times I see our players just caught off guard or surprised, and the puck all goes to the other side. Okay. Um, 
Another thing I want to emphasize too is some of you might say, well, why can't we cycle back here? Can we roll the puck all the way across? You can do a lot of different things, okay? I just want to cover some very basic stuff and keep it on one side, all right? But yes, we can we can roll it to the other side, switch sides back and forth, cycle behind the net. There's all sorts of ways to do it, okay? So I just want to throw that in there for anyone asking. All right, that's all, guys. Okay, normally I'd use an NHL example, but I couldn't find a quick one in which we do like several cycles. Uh, so I'm using one of my own uh, roller hockey games. It's a little bit different. At three man's a little more difficult because uh, if we cough it up, uh, it's going to lead to a rush. But anyway, so here's my teammate, and I call for the cycle. I'm a little bit behind the net. You can't see me, but he'll just throw it down there blind. And as a righty, he uses forehand to bank it off the board or roll it along the board, I should say. Okay. So I pick it up. I'm trying to hit him in the middle, but they're playing. They're playing solid defense. Okay, so he calls for a cycle. So I bank it back again, roll it back. Okay, now he had a short one over there, but that's pretty tough. It's pretty tough to hit. So I call for a cycle again. Okay, and then they did kind of stop us here. See, but you see, my player is already going to that board. Um, I'll say the one thing I didn't like was we're probably cheating a little too much for the board. We should be staying in front of the goalie a little bit longer. Okay. Um, so let's just watch it in real time without the pauses, just to see what that two-man cycle looks like here. So one, two, and three coming up right here. Okay. And that's what a cycle will look like.